embody the lives of the love of Christ um, uh, psychosocially uh, in, in the context of Trinitarian relationships. That's where uh, people can experience. Let me give you an example. And this is an, ex an example I love, I love to use. Uh, when I moved into my neighbourhood, um, a classic block of houses, um, I moved into a house here. It was number eight. And um, Ange and I tried to get to know our neighbours. We'd talk to our neighbours. They'd talk to us. And we tried to show something of the love of God for them. Right? But there were limits to that. We had some friends who were part of our community network that we would relate to back and forward and they could actually see the way that we related to each other in a way that was safe, accepting, respectful. But it was observed from afar. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? But what we decided to do is to develop a little chook co-op down here in between our houses. And we invited our neighbours to actually um, put food into uh, the chicken cooperative and take out eggs for free. So what that meant is we developed these relationships um, and every time they visited the chicken coop, they actually had to enter into that psychosocial space that we created, right? So that now, in fact, they weren't just hearing us talk about love, not just watching us talk with each other in a loving way. They were starting to existentially experience the love that we were talking about. In fact... Um, I can remember one uh, dramatic occasion. Um, we'd had the chooks for a year and they'd gone off the lay and we decided it was time for a chook barbecue. Um, now, we've got strong animal rights activists in our community and they encouraged the chooks. Uh, they encouraged actually the kids to stand up for the chooks. So the kids <laughs> chained themselves to the fence <laughs> and um, uh, to protest against this. Um, actually, some people think the Waiters Union is too highly organised and so they've developed a group called Not the Waiters Union within the Waiters Union to protest against the degree of structure that we do have. Anyway, so, anyway the kids rose to the occasion, chained themselves to the fence. That day, the kids learned, you can fight hard, you don't always win. Uh, <laughs> But the chooks got their revenge. They were the toughest chooks <laughs> that you've ever tried to eat in your life. Anyway, so, yes. Now, it's more the fact that they were really old, I think. And anyway, so, um, but we, um, as we were barbecuing, we, we went to our neighbour who lived in this house um, at the back of the block. And we invited her to come. We weren't sure whether she'd come at all because she often watched us, heard us talking, but didn't really engage a lot. And we wondered how she'd feel about it. But when she came there and sat under the mango tree, chewing on tough chook, <laughs> uh, drinking a few beers, um, she began to experience the place as a safe place for her. Uh, where people accepted her and respected her. and You understand what I'm talking about? And at the end of the afternoon, she took me aside and she said, Ilado, Ilado. You know, she's Greek. She said, come, come here. I just want to tell you something. And I said, what is that, Thea? And that's auntie in Greek. She said, Davi, this was just like my village back home in Greece. Now, if you want to interpret that, for a Greek that means, and this is the kingdom of heaven on earth. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Did you understand that? Yes. Now, that's what we're on about. We're on about bringing something of heaven to earth. And we don't need thousands of people to do it. Mm. 
Three will do. Three will do. You don't need funds to do it. Three people will do. The revolution that subverts the dominant paradigm in society just requires three willing participants. Now, don't you think that's good news? Yeah. Huh? You don't have to be in a mega church to make this happen. You don't have, have to have heaps of money to make this happen. If there's two of you, find a third. If there's one of you, find two other people. You can make it happen. That is the good news. Huh? Right? You can create the psychosocial space that actually reflects something of the life of heaven on earth in such a way that people can experience it. And when you talk about the gospel, they'll understand what you're talking about because they will be experiencing it right here, right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Huh? They will know what you mean when you say Christ loves you because they will feel loved. They will know what you're talking about when you say no one is expendable because they will feel special. They will know what you're talking about when you say, actually, I believe in an alternative society where people can actually have a voice and be heard because they will participate in the decisions that impact on them in that particular group. They will experience that. And it's a reality. Does that make sense? Okay. Now... When it comes to community development, Christian groups and organisations normally use a range of approaches. Let me put them up for you. The first approach that Christian groups and organisations tend to use is what I call individual uh, development. And it looks something like this. have a person in the middle here and they decide to do a whole lot of stuff in the community. And it looks something like that. Okay? A little bit like a star. Right? Burning brightly. Right? <laughs> With a charismatic figure at the centre who's so excited about getting involved in stuff in their local community. Are you familiar with that kind of approach? Okay. What are some of the strengths of that approach? Only takes one person to do it. That's right. It takes one person to do it. You can do it regardless of whether anybody does it or not. And that is highly significant if you're wanting to take an initiative. That you don't wait for anybody. You just get on. You do it. Right? Um, what else? Diversity so that you're, you're actually that's right, you're relating to a whole range of people out there, you know. You're relating to people here, there, everywhere. Yeah, that's right. You're wanting to embrace everybody, right? Okay. Starts with you, but you're going out to other people all over the place. A lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. What else? What are the strengths of that approach? Easy to manage. Easy to manage, yes. All you have to do is convince yourself that it's okay and you can go for it. <laughs> right? No committees. Right? Action, action, action. Yeah, you can feel like you're in control. Right? Right? Okay, what are some of the weaknesses of this approach? Burnout. Burnout. Somebody said very quickly. <laughs> with feeling. That's right. The trouble with the stars is they tend to burn out. Why? They take on too much. Take on too much. Right? Because you're there. Sorry? Okay, you're expanding in all these different directions and all those are then a, a whole range of directions that you're responsible to sustain. You're at the centre of it all, and right? Trying, trying to impose their way on all of those and you're trying to impose your way on everybody else and not everybody appreciates that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stress in trying to get them to go along with your stuff, isn't there? Yes? Yeah, the cosmology, the reason it started, they announced because they run out of fuel. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. Okay. So a lot of people, a lot of people start this way because of the strengths, but over time realise the weaknesses, and so they move on to another bottle that looks a bit like this. 